Hi, and welcome to this film on the wonderful art of wire jewellery. My name is Linda Jones, and I hope I'll be able to inspire you to take up this very creative craft. This film is designed to give you information on the tools and techniques required to make wire work. There'll be information on basic techniques if you follow all the projects. I've been creating wire and beaded jewellery for many years now and I've written several books on the subject and also have filmed tutorials for Bead TV and I can tell you I never get bored of working with wire. It is such a versatile and malleable material. You can weave with it, you can plait it, you can stitch and crochet with it, you can spiral it and coil it. There are so many permutations and combinations of designs that you can make with beads and semi-precious stones. So if you'd like to follow the chapters, I'm first of all going to start by introducing you to tools and materials. I'm going to be telling you a little about the tools that you need to get started. And there really only are a few essential pliers required What's so fun about this craft is you don't need a lot of investment in the tools. You just need three pairs of pliers. One of them is your round nose pliers, and these are tapered steel cones, which you use for coiling and making spirals and just for rounding wire. You also will need flat nose pliers. Now the difference between these and something you'd find in a normal workbox is they're completely smooth jawed. There are no serrations or grips on the inside because that would mark your wire. And then there are chain nose pliers, sometimes called uh, snipe nose pliers. And they do exactly the same as the flat nosed, except they are tapered at the end, which means you can work on more intricate pieces and just finer work. So those are your three pliers. And then you need wire cutters. And the best ones to get for wire work are the ones that are tapered. They're called flush side cutters. And again, they're better tapered because you can cut into small areas. So those are your main tools. And then a hammer is useful. Now this is a hammer I designed called the Whammer. And it's specifically for wire work because it's a two-headed hammer with a nylon head on one side just for flattening out your wire um, and then the other end is steel and it's slightly convex which means when it hits the wire it pushes and spreads it out and doesn't leave any marks. Um, but any steel hammer will do. Um, a planishing hammer or a chasing hammer is equally good and you need to use that in combination with a steel block. So the steel block should be highly polished again and flat steel. Any imperfections on the block will actually come onto the surface of your wire. So you could actually use the back of an old iron. As long as it's flat and highly polished, it will do. So those are your tools. And then, of course, there's wire. Now, there are many types of wire and it's actually quite a complex thing when you go on an online bead shop and you think, what wire do I buy? Well, I would suggest anything with copper in it. Copper, uh, of all the metals, is one of the most flexible and malleable. And you can buy it coated in various colours. In fact, all the rainbow colours under the sun. So these are enamel surfaced uh, copper wires. Um, you can buy it in its pure form and you can also purchase it uh, silver plated, gold plated and so forth. Um, we are going to do all the practice projects with copper and then we'll move on to silver plated wire. And if you store it in these self seal packets, you'll find that it won't tarnish because you'll keep it away from oxygen. So I recommend keeping it um, in its different gauges in the packets. Now I should mention gauges because, again, apart from all the different types of wire, there are so many different gauges. That means thicknesses of wire. 
The one that we're going to be using most is 0 0.8 of a millimetre. That's 20 gauge. And it is complicated again because in se several books or films or tutorials you will have seen 20 gauge or 24 gauge um, and that is the American gauge system um, which means the higher the figure or the higher the number the thinner the wire but in Europe and the UK we go by millimeters and the wire that you will be using most is 0 0.8 you just can't have enough of it to practice on um, and you can get finer wires of 0 0.6 millimetre, which is 24 gauge, and 0 0.4 millimetre, and so forth. So now that we've talked a little bit about wire, um, obviously the next thing is materials. And I don't probably have to say much about beads, because I'm sure you're, you all love beads or know about beads. Um, and you can buy these in different colours, in different types, so get yourself a good box with compartments in it, possibly with something that you can see through the lid so that you can easily see your colour combinations. And you can store your beads somewhere where they don't roll around. And you can also keep your findings. Now findings is the word for the components that uh, link your things together like cords and chains and ear wires. So you can keep all those together in a box where it's easily available. So really that's all you need to get started and very soon I'm sure once you've got your equipment you can be sitting at your kitchen table in the comfort of your own home and you'll be making your own beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm.